I'm trying to move some of my things into a storage pod for now in Van Nuys. You don't think I'll wear this ever again, do you? We need another donate bag. <laughs> this is what you call minimalistic living. Good morning, you guys. I thought I would start this moving out video at the end, so you're not wildly confused. I'm sitting in my room in Los Angeles. I've had this little apartment townhouse for four years of my life. My lease was up this time last year, which was probably the last time that we talked about this apartment. And this time last year, I had come to the realization, oh my gosh, I'm moving into a house that's not gonna be ready for probably another year. I thought to myself a year ago. My twin friends, Marcus and Vincent, were looking for a place to live in LA. I was like, oh, that could be perfect. You could move into my apartment, live with all of my stuff. For me, it works as a functional storage unit. For you, it works as a nice furnished home. It is a beautiful system. It worked amazingly, 10 out of 10. This was like probably the least stressful part of my life. But I have come to, you know, the conclusion that I'm really, I'm needing to downsize perhaps into one state. Today, here I am. This is the last morning in my apartment ever. This has been such a big chunk of my life and some of the worst days of my life have happened here. Some of the best days of my life has happened here. Overall, I would say that I am a different person walking out of this apartment than I was when I came into this apartment. No, Morgan, no tears, <laughs> no tears. There's no tears allowed. Tear ducts, control yourself, this is embarrassing. It's just a room and it's just a bunch of stupid walls. I just did my freaking foundation with foundation that I just bought. This is like out of control, this is out of control. What I was going to say is I feel like the most that you can ask for from like a place that you live is that you know you use that chapter of your life and you grow into the person that you're meant to be for the next phase of your life so i'm happy with my experience here because i feel like when i came in who i wanted to be i kind of you know over the course of four very roller coaster slightly traumatic but also really amazing years you move on into the next chapter and i feel like i accomplished that so now i can close the chapter and start a new chapter somewhere else but it is sad <laughs> so there is an entire moving vlog this is just now the longest winded intro ever because i thought i'd give you a little background information i imagine that moving is a lot more fun <laughs> when you know where you're moving to. Um, I'm gonna give you a little um, spoiler. All of my stuff is going to a storage pod and then I don't know where I'm gonna go. Yeah, I have so much shit. You don't realize how much shit you acquire until you start going through every drawer and you're like, how did all this shit get into this drawer? I have no idea. Things happen for a reason. I don't know what the reason is yet, but things happen for a reason and I will make the most out of living in my little storage pod. Woo! Ready to leave for I don't know how long, and I don't know what I'm gonna accomplish while I'm gone, and I don't know when I'm coming back, but we're leaving. You could change your mind real quick. You could stay here. We have things to do. We have a chicken coop to work on, contractors to find, but no. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. <laughs> I miss you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do all day? Well, the same thing I do every day. <laughs> TSA pre check passengers must use the North Security Checkpoint. Everyone's head is like, oh, <laughs> hey, yeah, take some videos because, like, if we don't make it, at least they'll have good footage of us before. <laughs> Dude, you guys know I have a small bladder. It might, some of it might just like squirt out. Oh, I feel like nauseous. <laughs> We are here. 
accompanied by everything in my forgotten past life. I move this little mirror over here so I can get ready. Before I can move my ever so glamorous life into a storage pod, I have to very much decompress, consolidate, lessen. Hello? Uh, good morning, this is Brian telling you that I should move the storage. Hi, how are you? I'm moving, I have a, um, a townhouse in Encino and I'm trying to move some of my things into a storage pod for now in Van Nuys. You know, you have in mind what you wanna move? I'm taking a lot of bigger things, like I have a couch, I have a uh, kitchen table. Sure, absolutely. Thank you so much. Okay, I'll text you soon. No problem. Thank you, okay? Bye. Okay, well, the movers are scheduled for the 24th of May. <laughs> my plan of attack is that I'm just gonna start going room by room. We started yesterday, Trinity and I, on my infamous trash room. We're gonna just, we're gonna figure it out. Ow, my asshole! <laughs> oh! I had food poisoning yesterday, okay? Yeah, it's really not good at all. Sometimes I'll come in here to look at my outfit and then I'll be so disgusted at myself as a person that this is something that exists in my life that I just decide that wherever I was going with my outfit, I'm no longer in the mood to go. You can kind of see up here, some of the trash room has already come down. The trash is slowly coming back down to earth. Gravity is like pulling the trash down. We're gonna start cleaning out the closet. <laughs> we got all of these empty. Pretty much everything from these drawers went to Goodwill and now we gotta go through this. I like to play auction. Either gets auctioned off to someone that lives here or <laughs> it goes in a donate bag and I take it to Goodwill. And we had to go to three different Goodwills today because all the Goodwills are apparently full. Yeah, they wouldn't accept donations. They were like, oh, um, we're sorry. Yeah, no. Ew, I'm not taking out their nasty ass trash, okay? They Auction number one. No. I'm Very 2017 high school era. We need another donate bag. <laughs> you don't think I'll wear this ever again, do you? Morgan, do you want any of these hats? Because I'm going to put it in the donate if you don't. No, I don't even want to look at them. That could be like if you're going to like a funeral. <laughs> I think I wore this once and I felt like a couch. You know what the common trend is? Everything from Princess Polly freaking sucks. Yeah. I have all this stuff for Princess Polly when everyone started shopping there. I don't think I've ever worn a single thing. You look like a Polly Pocket. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll keep this. Yeah, Where the frick am I gonna wear this? What the fuck? <laughs> Where the hell? Damn, how the fuck you get this on? I feel like your brother when you put on a mermaid tail. <laughs> you actually look really cute. Shut the fuck up, Morgan. <laughs> no, you I look, look like a fucking slinky. Bro. You look like Kim Kardashian. Well, maybe take the hoodie off. <laughs> you <laughs> ball? I just wonder why can't they make things like a shirt? Well, that's a no. So is this. <laughs> you really are easy to part things with. My personality is like revolving door. I'm yes. like, it comes in one way, then it gets the fuck out, then something new comes in. It's then like it gets you don't the fuck dwell out. on things for too long. I try. <laughs> I'm not a this sleeve length girl. I it's either know, long yeah. or it's not. Yep. Like cut this shit out. I'm done with this. <laughs> Good American. Sorry, Chloe. This is the most uncomfortable fabric I've ever felt in I my think entire that's life. The cutest thing I've ever seen. You want it? It feels like you're a fish that got caught in like one of those massive fishing nets. <laughs> That's a donate. Well, that got rid of a lot of stuff. We've been graciously granted access to the man's Tesla. I have like 15 bags this size to take to the Goodwill. Stay. Nice. Six, seven, eight. We were both young. <laughs> <laughs> So as you can see, I've already cleaned a lot of it out and this is what we are keeping. So I went through a Doc Martin phase. These are fun. These are my favorite shoes. This is like spicy and scandalous. You got the chain. If you're feeling in a little different mood, I will literally be 6'5 in these. So I keep them around. Do I wear them? Not often, but I keep them around. All of this is from like 20... 
teens. This is the end of an era. I wonder... I do wonder what would happen to you if you ate all of these. I can do this. I am a strong person and I can do this. This is the big guy. Hi, Markish. Oh, yeah. You want some lunch? <laughs> Hello? That's how you know that shit has gone bad. Gravity no longer works. One is done. This is my pride and joy of this whole apartment. Good morning, everyone. Well, actually, it's 346. It is Friday, May 20th. My stomach hurts, and apparently my first reaction to that wasn't like, oh, maybe I should chill out for a second or take a tum or, like, lay down. No, I'm eating carrot cake from Veggie Girl, which is one of my favorite things about LA. I was spiraling deep into my thoughts last night because I'm like, I've lived here for a fifth of my life. A fifth of my life! And I'm just supposed to pack everything up and move out in 10 days? Like, that's a crazy concept to me. I thought today I would go through my vanities, bathroom products, my makeup. I know that makeup products, they all have a little trash can thing on them that tells you when you're supposed to trash can them. And all of these should have been trash canned so many moons ago. It's just never happened. So here I am, eating my veggie grill carrot cake. Mm-hmm. This is my favorite thing that I have kept in here since the dawn of time. I have a little bedazzled Starbucks cup that Trisha sent me. Um, love the cup. So there's really no system whatsoever going up, up in these drawers. I was just kind of throwing shit wherever shit was convenient to throw at the time. If you're going through the drawer, step one, you could definitely wax your legs. I do remember trying this and I don't remember it working. After you wax your legs, you can have some moisturizer. This is the best moisturizer in this bottle, liquid gold. Look at that little itty bitty teeny tiny toothpaste. How oh, cute. Tell me that's not the cutest thing you've ever seen in your entire life. Tell me. Pregnancy test for all of the times that I've never thought that I was pregnant. Apparently I went through a wax phase. I wonder if this works. Okay, wait. I know that a lot of you probably don't need to see me wax my legs, but I have to know if this product is worth keeping or getting rid of. Like I can't just estimate, I have to know. <laughs> Ow. Ow. It didn't even work. <laughs> And this little itty bitty thing. Oh, it smells rancid. Look, I'll show you. This is a broken Cymbalta pill. When I tried to come off of it, the doctor would not let me come off of it. And I, I would call and I'd be like, hey, bitch, I really want to get off this pill because I feel like I'm going to die. And she's like, oh, Morgan, just up the dosage, up the dosage. She's like, you're going to have all these side effects if you try to come off of it. And I just want you to wait a couple more months. I'm like, I can't wait a couple more months, bitch. So what I had to do every single day I would crack the pill in half. This is an example. And I counted one day how many little itty bitty balls were inside one pill. I would spill them out on a piece of paper and I'd count out half of them to get half of the dosage of the medicine so I could take half of the dosage and eventually I weaned myself off. Would I recommend doing that? No, probably would have been a lot safer for them to, I don't know, wean me off of it themselves. But instead I had to take matters into my own hands. What's the theme of my life? I'm always having to take matters into my own hands, so. That's something that I did. Would I recommend it? Absolutely not. But hopefully your doctor is better than mine. Anything else? Anything else? I just went today to see my little storage pod and I met the little storage pod guy and I saw my little new home, new house tour. You're going to see it tomorrow. My beautiful storage pod. There's no where to put the storage pod in front of my apartment. So I'm having movers come take the things that I want and they're going to take it and drop it off at the storage pod and then the storage pod gets shipped to Colorado. How long did it take me to piece that together? You don't even want to know. Today is the day where shit has to get done. It's like there can no longer be an oh I'll do this tomorrow type of mindset. Like this shit has to get done today so the movers can come pick my life up and take it away tomorrow. So I'm going to Home Depot. I'm going to get some like bubble wrap and little packing things so I don't break everything that I've decided to keep. I already got boxes and stuff, but 
I'm trying to piece the boxes together nicely so me in the future will be like, oh, me in the past wasn't a raging idiot and I actually put some sort of thought into how I put everything together. You know, there's a lot of thoughts. My brain is tired of thinking. Do you ever feel like that? Like you just had to think so much and it's like, gosh, I just wish I could not think for a second. I'm sick and tired of thinking. Once the things come off the shelves, like that means it's over. And it's over, it's definitely over, but this solidifies the fact that it's over. I guess we'll start here. My beautiful little YouTube plaques. <laughs> Next shelf, I have a little brain man. I also, I think I read most of these for school. Maybe. Neuroscience of suicidal behavior. Neuroscience of sleep and dreams. Neuroscience of intelligence, I only got like Halfway, eh, maybe like five pages out of this one. Maybe one day when I want to feel smart again, I'll start reading. This was my favorite book ever, just because it's easy to read. Like you could read this in one sitting if you really put your mind to it. What I know for sure, Oprah Winfrey. Fat Chance started reading this and decided I didn't want to read it anymore. Emotional Intelligence 2.0. Honestly, I thought it was a little boring. Maya Angelou, Letter to My Daughter, 10 out of 10. The War of Art, 10 out of 10. Power of Different, I remember liking it. But I don't know if I would give it a 10. Maybe I'd give it like an eight. Why Men Love Bitches. Honestly, I thought this book was really fucking stupid. A little cacti, I suppose I can get rid of you. Little coffee table book, so maybe I'll donate. <gasps> this was its own era. You would go on in like the 10th grade and you'd be like, oh, what kind of message do I want to send to the boy that I'm talking to that's pissing me off today? And you would post one of these on your Snapchat story and everyone would message you and be like, yes, I love that book, Milk and Honey, Queen. Your voice alone drives me to tears. And high school me bookmarked that. Like I, I pulled a sticky note out of my drawer, pulled it off the little other pad of sticky notes, and I bookmarked that. This girl had it figured out. She had us all figured out at one point. Pick one, let's pick one. Let's pick a random, pick a random one, pick a random one. I want to be a doctor, maybe a surgeon. How nice it would be to go from cutting my own skin in order to harm to cutting someone else's skin in order to heal? What are they feeding high schoolers? I went on the internet and I bought this. Hi, welcome to Chili's. What is next? My YouTube shorty award that showed up broken. If you are someone that has any sort of health anxiety, any sort of doom style panic, don't read this. If you read this, you're gonna think you have every single thing in the book. It's like basically like going on Google and being like, I have a headache and they're like, you're gonna die. This book fucking slaps mastering stand-up someone sent me to this and they're like you should be a comedian and i read one page i'm like eh, i don't know at one point in my life i was gonna do a study abroad program in the czech republic this is actually a crazy story this is when i was at school in hawaii and they had this whole program and they're like okay we're gonna pick a certain amount of people study abroad czech republic i'm like sign me up i'm going to czech republic so I, you know, got all ready. I signed up for class. Closer to when the semester started. So it was late August because in the Czech Republic, they started university after they started university in America. Czech Republic, the people there call me and they're like, hey, the person that was handling your file to study abroad quit in the middle of the summer and your file didn't get processed. So now it's too late. So now you can't come until next semester. So then I get on the phone with Hawaii. I'm like, hey, Hawaii. Um... I can't go to Czech Republic because someone fucked up and they're like, hey Morgan, um, well school already started here and we're three weeks in, so good luck sister, see you next semester. Hang up the phone. Basically I had to stay in Colorado that whole semester. F my life. It was not in my grand plan. Then Shane and Ryan come to Colorado and they're like, hey, we're gonna go to the Stanley Hotel, do this whole ghost video series thing. And I was like, I don't really know what we're doing, but okay, I guess I'll go. That is when my whole YouTube thing started frequently like once a week. I think back to the Czech Republic I'm like, oh my gosh, if I would have gone to Hawaii or the Czech Republic None of this would have ever happened Whatever is in your greatest good is in your greatest good And sometimes that doesn't make sense for a lot of different reasons because like I said, I was 12 out of 12 Fucking pissed off like ready to go for a walk on the freeway. I could do not I was like this is the end of my life This is the end of my life but as the story unfolds, it was actually the beginning of my life. And I could cry just thinking about it. I didn't get to go to the Czech Republic. 
but the Czech Republic still changed me. Maybe I should learn Czech. Maybe I should go to the Czech Republic and say thank you. Another dead plant and a timer. This is also good, The Gifts of Imperfection, Brene Brown. 12 out of 10, you should read this, Untethered Soul. How to win friends and influence people. Very finance bro, but there's some good things in there. I freaking love these. Life-size poster of cookie. Now we have this. The process of where you decide what you want to keep versus what you want to give away is what can be replaced. Like something like this can easily be replaced. Something like this? I don't know if it's going to be so easy to replace him. I just don't think so. The journal with my face on it and inside, this is where Trinity and I wrote what Brock and Brad were going to say in Brock and Brad's video, which we have Brad. We got Brock. This is the last time going to sleep in my room while it still looks like a room. Last night. This is aimless love. Out my room until my day is done. Can you find the beauty in the small things? This is aimless love. Selling alone out my room until my day is done. Can you find the beauty in the small things? My son. You excited to move, Marquis? No. Rhythms. When light enters the room, it dances just for me. Marcus, what was your favorite thing about living in Encino? Ooh. <laughs> the Chipotle. <laughs> When the sun starts to set, we see the good and ends. Funny how the fresh coat of paint can symbolize the new beginning. And the dropping of the hat can express one's urgency. I want the truth for both that. I want love with all the trends. I want a new day just to show my buddy some of these. This one's for butter on his skillet. This one's for fresh cut greens. This for the sound of paper. <laughs> when I roll up my relief, this for that good Mac Miller. This for them well-kept dreams. This is for the people who kept chasing. They told you not to be. <laughs> Tell me this isn't giving like Mario Party X Roblox. To the left, ladies and gentlemen, we have my new home. Gorgeous, rich, successful new house tour. Beautiful driveway, cobblestone to the estate. Here we are. What is warm? Day is long, that's all right. All I want is extra time to spend with you. Oops. New apartment tour. Welcome home, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone was doubting that I was going to be able to fit my bean bag. Honorable mention, the bean bag is coming with me. Okay, we have Cookie's Litter Spaceship wrapped by me. Just some random bags that I'm emotionally attached to for whatever, oh my gosh. My parents a few years ago for Christmas sent me a quesadilla maker and I was so sad because I was thinking there's no way I'm moving a quesadilla maker to Colorado. Oh bitch. Random kitchen stuff that probably should be packed better. There's this little convenience store next to my apartment. Like you could walk there in 30 seconds. There was a guy that worked there. His name was Abraham. There was, I knew everyone that worked there. Trinity and I went there maybe two or three years ago. Abraham, we're celebrating our birthday. And he's like, oh, my two favorite girls, happy birthday. And he gave us these two little glasses. <laughs> I love this man. I'm telling you, I love all the guys that work there. And he gave us two. They're these little Jack Daniel whiskey cups. And he's like, oh, happy birthday. Come back every day for the rest of your life. I'm like, I'm coming back every day for the rest of my life. These, they're irreplaceable because Abraham at my favorite store gave them to us for our birthday. So I brought mine and I brought Trinity's. And wherever I end up living, I don't know if that's going to be my house. It probably won't be done until I'm 90 years old. I don't know if I'm going to move somewhere else. But I will take these with me everywhere I go for the rest of my life. This is it. This is gonna be the best day ever coming back to all of my stuff and being like, oh my gosh, I have a whole life's worth of things that I absolutely love. It's gonna be like the greatest Christmas ever. Okay, that's that. Now this is what you call minimalistic living. 
Well, I'm about to eat an omelet, and I think this is going to probably be my last meal here, so cheers to that. Enrique, the junk, the junk king. I'm back. So we've had Enrique before. I didn't know that when I called you. Hello, this is my friend. <laughs> now he's a two-time, he's a main character at this point. He shoots, <laughs> he scores. I am just making sure there's nothing left. Good. Now <laughs> that everything is empty, it feels a lot less sentimental and special. It's all just four walls, a few cabinets, a few sinks. Not the apartment that's necessarily special, but it's the things that, that I put into the apartment that made it special. And I still have all, all most of those things. So it's like no matter where ever I end up next, I can recreate something that is equally special. It's the end of a chapter, but it's more importantly, the start of a new chapter. I did have a lot of really good memories here, which I will always have, regardless of if I live here or not, which I don't, so. My last walkthrough, so I'm gonna do it with you. You come up to the top of the stairs, this is where I had my Peloton for the longest time and then it became Vincent's room. Come out this way over here. This was once <laughs> my beautiful office that I spent forever crafting. And eventually it became just my trash room. Coming back this way, cute. Cute. Over here, this was also once my office. I also had a different roommate once upon a time that lived in here. Marcus has lived in here. This room has been the most interchangeable. Back out this way to the corner. This is my room. I guess it was my room. This was my bathroom for years and years and years. I just took my final pee in here. You all know about my bladder problems, so you know that this means a lot to me. Trinity always told me to close toilet seats because if it's open, that's money flying out, and if you have it closed, that's money that stays in. Goodbye, closet. Goodbye, bathroom. Goodbye, my favorite toilet. Come downstairs. One of my favorite things, the window to Jesus. The living room is all empty. These clocks have never been right. Goodbye, bathroom. Goodbye to my other favorite toilet. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go for one little last stroll. I've always said that this little complex feels like Animal Crossing, like it feels like someone in that little island came and put all these bushes and all these little flowers and all these little decorations There's adorable little statues everywhere don't ask me why i don't know this is the cutest little pathway and i would go for walks every day and then i would come to this gate and that's how you get in there's always no matter what you do ginormous spiders right here so i just decided i'm gonna let the spiders live so i just kind of go around the spiders i would come out here and i would say i got the lucky unit because i was always right next to the pool and then you come back this way. Do, 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 do. And this is my front door. And you pop it open. And we're back home. So, I guess this is it. I'll lock the door. Goodbye, fireplace. Goodbye, fancy windows. Goodbye to the spiders outside. That is the end. I am going to go drop off the keys to the owner and I will send a little prayer that whoever lives here next has as good as a time as I did. Ow! 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 It hurts my heart, but that's what I gotta say that I will send a prayer that whoever lives here next will have as good as a time as I did because it's a really beautiful place in my life. Okay, bye.